Nebraska Man was an evolutionist fraud that was constructed completely from a single tooth. It was published in newspapers, and scientists even made a drawing of a caveman and his family to show what it must have looked like. In the end, it ended up being nothing but a pig's tooth. This shows how desperate evolutionists are. I have to admit, that sure makes evolutionists look pretty pathetic. I just had to investigate. The story begins in 1917 when rancher and amateur geologist Harold Cook discovered a tooth in the upper Snake Creek beds of Nebraska along with other fossils typical of North America. He held on to it for about five years until February of 1922 when he wrote a letter to Dr. Henry Osborne. The following month, he sent Osborne the tooth to be examined. Osborne was a vocal supporter of what came to be known as Piltdown Man. After the discovery of Piltdown Man, he also became a proponent and the originator of the Dawn Man theory of human human origins. The Dawn Man theory was at odds with the vast majority of the theories associated with human origins. The common scientific view of human origins was that humans and apes diverged between 3 and 8 million years ago. Osborne, on the other hand, contended that humans and apes had a common ancestor 23 to 33 million years ago. He maintained that the ancestor was more human than ape, and that apes had evolved parallel to humans. Osborne was also an adherent to Aristogenesis, which held that evolution had some sort of goal toward the development of humanity. Many creationists accepted Osborne's view at the time, but this was more of an annoyance to him because they were misrepresenting Osborne as asserting that humans had never evolved from lower life forms. Like Piltdown Man, if the tooth was from a human ancestor, it would be the perfect specimen to support the Dawn Man theory and destroy the common out-of-Africa view of more recent human origins. Osborne and Dr. William D. Matthew concluded that the tooth most likely came from an anthropoid ape. They received a similar Similar conclusion from Dr. Milo Hellman and William K. Gregory, who also supported the Piltdown Man's discovery. Osborne published his finding for peer review in the March 1922 issue of Science, dubbing the specimen Hesperopithecus Harold Cookai. It was immediately picked up by the Illustrated London News with an illustration drawn by Amade Forestier, who modeled his illustration on Homo erectus, then called Pithecanthropus erectus. The illustration was accompanied by a caption Mr. Forestier has made a remarkable sketch to convey some idea of the possibilities suggested by the discovery. As we know nothing of the creature's form, his reconstruction is merely the expression of an artist's brilliant imaginative genius. But if, as the peculiarities of the tooth suggest, Hesperopithecus was a primitive forerunner of Pithecanthropus, he may have been a creature such as Mr. Forestier has depicted. Osborne was unhappy with the illustration, saying, I have not stated that Hesperopithecus was either an ape man or in the direct line of human ancestry because I consider it quite possible that we may discover anthropoid apes with teeth closely imitating those of man. Until we secure more the dentition or parts of the skull or of the skeleton, we cannot be certain whether Hesperopithecus is a member of Simidae or of Hominidae. He further lamented the drawing. Such a drawing or reconstruction would doubtless be only a figment of the imagination of no scientific value and undoubtedly inaccurate. The scientific community at large was skeptical of the find because, according to the out-of-Africa theory, the Americas should have played no part in the early evolution of humanity. In the summers of 1925 and 1926, a mass of evolutionary scientists conducted a search of the site where the tooth was found. They found and uncovered the remains of an extinct form of Picari known as Prostenops. Like Piltdown Man, if it were indeed genuine, it would have done more toward disproving evolution than confirming it. It had never gained wide acceptance. In the end, it was discovered to be a misidentification by the evolutionist community while creationists had nothing to do or say. It is another testament to the value of peer review, a further example of how creationism taught me real science. Learn more about the real science behind other creationist arguments by watching other episodes. If there's a creationist argument you think I should investigate, please comment below. It may be the subject of a later video. In the meantime, subscribe and make sure you don't miss it.